Hey there. This week the Columbus Symphony is playing a really cool piece. It's actually by Brahms, but it's uh, arranged uh, and orchestrated by Arnold Schoenberg in 1927. And he took the Brahms Piano Quartet Opus 25 in G minor and wrote it for full orchestra, huge orchestra. And uh, he wrote it the way he imagined Brahms might have written orchestration if he had lived into the uh, 20th century. Anyway, the piece begins with a, a beautiful four-bar uh, phrase which has so much potential with its intervals and expressiveness. And then the three clarinets have to, to open the piece with this. It's, it's a beautiful orchestration, but tricky to tune. E-flat, B-flat, and bass clarinet together on this melody. So Brahms writes little um, phrases for each bar, so I have to rephrase each bar, but I have to do it in a way so that the four bars make sense together. the way that goes and then he sort of takes that apart as Brahms is, is want to do. He deconstructs it and then creates other passages, other technical passages with it and this is one of them. It's like a, a lot of this piece reminds me of a, of a Bach Toccata and Fugue or something. orchestra trying to play the 16th together and switching off like that. Um, it's tricky to, to keep it together. And then there's another passage a little later uh, which uses the same 16th note uh, sort of ostinato and it sounds something like this. And this definitely took a little bit of woodshedding. So the way I practice this, this uh, difficult passage is is to take each beat, elongate the first note, and then go to the next uh, uh, first note of each group. Adding another beat. Okay, and then I do three beats together. Using the same long, short, 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 long, short, short, short. Doing the first, uh, or the last uh, whole bar, four beats, same way. Okay, and you can continue that with, with uh, all uh, eight beats of this lick. Um, the other thing I do is sort of the opposite actually. I crunch the four sixteenth notes together, so I actually rush them a little. And this is actually in, in the performance that I think this. Alright, so that way it gets me um, off those four sixteenths and ready to play the next one sooner. I don't do it that exa exaggerated, I just do a, a very tiny version of that, like a little spice. And it should sound like this when it's done. And in the second movement called Intermezzo, it's in 9-8, kind of a lilting uh, tempo in 3 times 3. The clarinet uh, brings in the second melody and it goes something like this, sort of slinky. So you have to resist the temptation to actually play these too late uh, after the rest and after ties and then it begins to sound um, more clunky and this would be the way it would sound if you played it almost like a 16th. So I'm attempting to play it more full and espressivo, even though it has a lot of breaks in it, rhythmically that is. starts with this gorgeous andante con moto melody in 3-4. And again the challenge is to keep the legato uh, very smooth 
and um, each note singing towards the end of the bar phrase. accompaniment part and puts it into a bunch of the woodwinds uh, so it becomes actually a very technical passage which cannot sound technical because basically it's just light chords underneath that same melody or something similar to it. It goes something like this. <laughs> It's written loud, but I'm trying to keep it, it light. Um, and what I do with this is sort of the opposite of what I do with other technical passages. Actually, I'm trying to elongate the notes, hold the last one a little longer, because each time you have to come in after a 30 second rest. And you don't want to be late on that and then rush the passage. Um, so an exaggerated version of what you shouldn't do is... Okay, and it just sounds garbled. I wanted to keep it flowing sort of like that melody that I first played. And the other thing I do to make this passage a little more secure is to move my finger to the, to the first note of the next um, beat immediately as I, as I finish the first one. So that's how that goes. And then the last movement is a rondo a la tingarese, which is a gypsy rondo. And it goes something like this. for the clarinets, E flat and B flat, um, which is very awkward and really almost impossible to play with the real fingerings. And it goes something like this, much slower. So it's all over the place. So what I do to, for the D sharp, the E and the D, I play overblow an A flat, a B flat, and an open G. So with the false fingerings, the overblown throat tones, it sounds like this. Okay, and then to get it faster, to keep it from sounding heavy, uh, even though it's a syncopated 16th, 8th note passage, I play it almost like a triplet. That's exaggerated, but just to keep it light. So, I have a little bit of the syncopation, and then it all comes together. A little later, there's a 16th passage, uh, which sounds like a Chani piano exercise, finger exercise. Um, but it has to be played like a melody. And it goes something like this. So you can hear the large intervals in there. The way I keep those light and moving forward is to condense the, the, each group of sixteenths a little bit and to voice very open, almost in a yodely kind of way and voice to the lower, uh, the lower note of each, of each lick, so. And then you put that together in tempo, try to uh, keep it light and open voicing. starts the same but then it goes up even higher and you'll hear that I'm you'll hear and see that I'm overblowing uh, an open G for the high D so it sounds a little squealy but if it's kept light and dance like like I just did 
uh, and practice that way, it, it shouldn't be too difficult. And a little later, there's a similar passage in a different key, and I use uh, the double side key plus high C for the high C sharps. Uh, makes it a little easier to get over the break, but it's still kind of awkward uh, because of this alternation between A and this side key. So here, this is the way it goes. So at the end of that passage, there's a tricky, the uh, descending arpeggios with the trill at the bottom. Have to be careful not to tighten these uh, these two fingers up on that C sharp trill. And then there's a big cadenza for E flat clarinet, uh, and the, the first clarinet joins in the middle of his lick. So the way I practice this is like I do many other passages like this. Um, I hold the first note of each group and then go to the first note of the next group with all the notes in between very quickly. So taking the second to last bar of this. So really the notes are but okay, and then adding a beat. That's three individual beats. Okay, so then putting it together. And then, Brahms actually wrote this all for B flat, but he, he uh, the players he must have written it for must have had low E flat extensions on their B flats, but I don't, and I don't know anybody who does. So a couple of passages that are solo licks that go down to a low E flat have to be played on A clarinet um, in order to work. Otherwise it's not too hard, it's actually easier on B flat uh, than, I mean on A than, than on B flat, but of course I had no choice. So luckily the no choice version is, is reasonably easy for the fingers once you coordinate. Then there's another one of those 16th passages again, um, this time for a clarinet solo and it's all articulated. And so I'm attempting to do uh, double tonguing here because it's just a little on the upper end of my single tongue uh, ability and I don't really want to add slurs. So, uh, but even though I'm double tonguing, I still try to think of fingers ahead of the tongue and light fingers. And very soft, open voicing, um, tonguing from fairly far back, so not thinking too far forward, so that the throat doesn't collapse on the double tonguing. Okay, so it's supposed to keep getting faster and faster, so it's hard to know where it's going to be. So the hard part of that is not to have it go too fast. So it's a little struggle to, to slow it down, but hopefully we'll be at a faster tempo by the time we get to that. Anyway, so those are some of the harder licks in this wonderful, wonderful piece of music uh, that we're playing tonight with the Columbus Symphony. And I hope, uh, well, if you can't come hear me uh, play tonight, then certainly look up a recording of this because it's it's a worthwhile piece to listen to. Very cool. All right, take care until next time. Bye.